Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 playing a bit of domination here on the map Nuketown running around here with the KM44 Sorry, Rifle and what I want to do here in this video is just kind of tell you guys the story of how I got into Call of Duty in the first place. I think I've told this story a couple of times here on my channel before but the majority of that was actually on Dear Nero which is a series not necessarily everybody watches and I've only talked about it a couple of times and chances are maybe a lot of you haven't actually heard the story so I thought it would be kind of fun to tell a story of how I got into gaming and then thus how I got into Call of Duty and I wanted to hear from you guys how exactly did you guys get into Call of Duty? because everybody comes from a different walk of life everybody comes from a different background and somehow we've all stumbled upon this gaming series and we are all just ridiculously invested in it so i wanted to hear how you guys got into call of duty so feel free to comment that down there in the comment section below and without further ado i'll tell you guys the story of how i got into call of duty in the first place and how that has led me down the path to lead me to you know, where I am today. Let's get started. So I've been a gamer the majority of my life. I'm 24 now. I'm going to be 25 next November, I guess a little bit after the new Infinity Ward game comes out. So I've been around for a while and I've also been playing games the majority of my life. The first console I ever played and actually owned was a Sega Genesis 3. This beautiful little boxy looking thing right here. It obviously wasn't like the original Sega Genesis. It was like a later one because my family was always kind of, we really have a lot of money growing up. So I would always end up getting consoles a little bit later than most other people would. So I ended up getting a Sega Genesis 3 where I would play games like Streets of Rage and Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff like that. Sonic and Knuckles was actually my personal favorite game to play on that particular system. And then later on I ended up getting a Game Boy Color which I would exclusively play Pokemon on and I love Pokemon even to this day. Again I'm 24 years old I still love playing Pokemon on occasion. It's a fun series and uh, it started out there with my teal Game Boy Color and that was definitely a lot of fun. I wish I knew where that thing went. Don't you wish you like you could keep track of stuff from your past or from your childhood like whatever happened to my Game Boy Color I have no freaking clues. I traded away it did break and I had to throw it. Like, I legitimately have no clue whatever happened to that thing. Like I mentioned, we didn't have a ton of money growing up. Like, we weren't poor by any stretch of the imagination, but we didn't spend a lot of money on video games or things like that. And so I was always a late adopter to a lot of new consoles. I eventually did get an upgrade to my Sega Genesis. I ended up getting a PlayStation. Now, I actually got the slimmer and smaller PS1 edition, which was like the one of the later versions of the PlayStation that came out towards the end of the PlayStation 1's life cycle. It was smaller, it was just a little bit more compact, and that's the one I had. And I'll play games like Driver or Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Cool Borders and Dave Mirrors Pro BMX. At that point in my life, I was really into kind of like extreme sports. Like, if you notice, there's a trend there, like Tony Hawk's, Cool Borders, and Dave Mirrors and stuff like that. So that's why I spent the majority of my time with on the original PlayStation. And then one Christmas, and I'll never forget uh, this Christmas because my entire family had the flu. It was it was terrible. We were all so sick, but my brother and I actually got a PlayStation 2 that we had been wanting forever. Like, we were actually saving up our allowances. We each got $5 every single week. We were saving up our allowances to actually purchase this thing until eventually we end up just getting it for Christmas and then we were very happy because all the money we had saved we could actually spend on games but we were also so ridiculously sick that particular Christmas that we like missed Christmas we didn't get to go see any family or anything like that like we opened our gifts then we all went back to bed like we were all just so sick but that was the year I got my PlayStation 2 and that is when my love for Call of Duty would begin so you see there was a number of games that came out for the PlayStation 2 and I think a couple maybe for the PlayStation 1 it was the Medal of Honor series now Medal of Honor obviously is a game series that's still kind of going on to this day but at that time it was a series of World War II games and in fact some of the people that worked on the original Medal of Honor games actually went on to work for Infinity Ward who made the original Call of Duty games so Medal of Honor like the old school Medal of Honor games were kind of the precursor to the modern Call of Duty game that we see today so that's definitely a little bit of a fun fact but yes I would play games like Medal of Honor Rising Sun or Medal of Honor European Assault and I had a lot of fun with those games after that there was kind of like a strange time period I suppose in my life at that point I was was about 14, 15, maybe 16, somewhere in that range. So I was, of course, getting into sports, school, girls, and things like that. And I didn't play video games nearly as much. But then my parents ended up getting divorced. I had to move to a whole new town and I had to start making new friends and whatnot. And I did. But at the same time, that's when I started getting back into gaming. There was a little time frame, I suppose, there where I wasn't into gaming nearly as much as I was growing up. But then I got right back into it one day when I went over to my cousin's house. So I went over to my cousin's house and he was playing Call of Duty 3. During this time frame, there was like a gap where the original Call of Duty came out. There was Call of Duty 2 and Call of Duty 3, and I didn't really play any of those games. I was like kind of 
during the time where I wasn't playing video games nearly as much. But I went over to my cousin's house one day and he was playing Call of Duty 3 and I thought that was the coolest thing ever because like, wait, this is like Medal of Honor, which is a game I still kind of played occasionally. I would play like Medal of Honor European Assault on occasion uh, just to go shoot Nazis and stuff like that, right? And so he's sitting there playing, but he's playing online. I was like, wait, what, you can play this stuff online? It was the coolest idea ever, right? So he actually let me play and of course I was awful. The first thing I wanted to do was be a sniper. So I would take my little sniper rifle and I would go and hide inside of a building. Um, when I talked about this before, I think you guys told me the name of the map, but I can't remember the name of it to this day. But those of you guys that are familiar with Call of Duty 3 maps, it was a small farm town, which I picture just being the majority of the maps on that game. But there was a dead cow, like a big dead cow, like out in the middle of a road. Like that was a feature of that map as well. But regardless, my first time ever playing Call of Duty was on that map. And I was basically laying in a building with a sniper aiming at a doorway, hoping somebody would walk through. But that was my first experience playing Call of Duty ever. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever because you could actually play online. And and he said to me, he's like, you know, if you actually got you know, an Xbox 360, and if you were to get this game, we could actually play online together. And to me, as somebody who grew up playing like Metal of Honor Rising Sun, which is single player, or European Assault, which was single player for me anyway, that sounds so cool to be able to play it with people at our own places, not have to play split screen, actually be facing other people. It sounded so cool. But again, didn't have a lot of money. Parents just divorced. Now living with my mom, she's trying to get on her feet because she was a stay-at-home mom the majority of my lifetime anyway. So she's out there trying to get jobs and stuff. So didn't have a lot of money. But, but, 2007, end up actually getting an Xbox 360 for Christmas. Also got with it, Call of Duty 4. This was a turning point for me. And it was also a turning point for the Call of Duty franchise. You see, the original Call of Duty was well received. It won a number of Game of the Year awards. It was well received as being a very good visual and audio experience as well as just being a good shooter game. Call of Duty 2 was pretty good as well. It was actually the best-selling Xbox 360 launch game. And a fun tidbit, 77% of anybody who purchased an Xbox 360 at launch also purchased Call of Duty 2. So that's just the thing. Like a lot of people have played it. COD 3 came out. It was well received at the time, but in retrospect, a lot of people say it's probably like the worst Call of Duty ever made, but still the first three COD games were pretty well received. They were all World War II, but Call of Duty 4, which was the first Call of Duty that I actually owned, would really change the COD franchise forever. It really did. First and foremost, it was a modern game. It was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. It was no longer a World War II game, which up until that point, that's all we ever saw. Sure, there was other franchises that would do modern stuff, like I'm thinking of like Tom Clancy stuff or Ghost Recon and things like that. But the Call of Duty franchise or the Medal of Honor franchise has always been World War II up until that point. When the game came out, it was so much different. You look back at this screenshot here of Call of Duty 2 or this screenshot here of Call of Duty 3, and then we go to here, which is some old Call of Duty 4 gameplay of mine, you see that it's like, wow, this is a completely different game. The graphics were stunning. It was being ranted and raved about by so many people at the time for just revolutionizing graphics and revolutionizing the, the modern shooter because nobody was doing things that Call of Duty 4 was doing at that time. You had a prestige system. You had kill streaks, You had camos that you could unlock via headshots. There was just so many different things for you to do in this game, and it was just revolutionary. And it also just happened to be the first Call of Duty game that I owned. So, of course, I fell in love immediately. It was so much fun. I was playing on the Xbox 360 with my friends and my cousin. Just We were all playing together. We were all terrible at the game, but we didn't care. We were having so much fun, and that's what really got me into the Call of Duty franchise was how much fun I had over the course of the first couple of years ever even owning an Xbox 360. That's what kind of turned me into what I am today. That is what set me down the path to become a Call of Duty YouTuber and to become Nero Cinema, you know, to, and just become what I am now, I suppose. It's all because of that year where I got an Xbox 360 and I started playing Call of Duty 4. It was so much fun to me. It was so much fun just trying to learn the game. The idea that I could play a game similar, not of course very different, but similar to uh, Medal of Honor, but play it with people online and play with my friends and be on the same team, not just play like 1v1 split screen matches and stuff like that, you know. It was a really cool experience for me. And ever since then, I've been a big fan of the Call of Duty franchise. Now, I didn't like just dive into it and play nothing but video games, nothing but Call of Duty, like the moment I got my 360. I played a bunch, but I think by the time World of War came out, I was only like third prestige or something along those lines. Like, I had couple of a couple of days of play time but I didn't you know play ridiculously but I played whenever I could whenever my friends were on wherever my cousins were on we would play but of course I still had school I still had you know sports to play and stuff like that so I didn't play a ridiculous amount in 2007 when COD 4 came out but in 2008 when World at War came out that's when I really got into 
uh, the Call of Duty franchise and really just started playing it so ridiculously much that it kind of consumed me in my entire existence. Like, I was 10th prestige in that game as compared to 3rd prestige back in COD 4. And after a while, like, um, I'm going to say probably 7 or 8 months into the World at War life cycle, I went back to COD 4 just to kind of wrap that up and get up to 10th prestige in that game too. And just, I played so much Call of Duty. Then, of course, Modern Warfare 2 came out, which was a giant game, re-revolutionizing the COD series. And after that, of course, you have Black Ops and you just year after year after year, every single COD game has been so good. And it was towards the end of the Modern Warfare 2 life cycle that I started getting into YouTube. I had a number of channels back in the day. Um, like seriously, like five or so. I kept, I was one of those people that I would make a channel, start uploading some videos, and then decide I didn't like the name of my channel and then delete it and then start over again. Uh, I would do that, like, I did that, like four or five times, something along those lines. And so I started making my own channels, like, ever since, like, maybe 2009, like, yeah, probably more, more like 2010. That's probably more likely. And, uh, just been on YouTube really ever since in one way or another. I've been a YouTube fan of Call of Duty since forever, like, when World of War came out. Again, my first start getting, like, so invested that, like, I just started playing, like, nonstop. Um, that's when I started getting into YouTube because I was watching YouTube videos to try and get better. And I, I think I said the I used to watch Hutch back when he was like a pure Call of Duty channel, and he actually had some World at War sniper tips and stuff like that. Then I would watch his videos, and that's how I initially found him. And uh, that's just how I got into the COD franchise, I suppose. I eventually ended up getting an Xbox 360. I started playing Call of Duty 4. I played it a bunch, which at the time, a couple of days of playtime over the course of uh, you know, several months was actually a lot of playtime, at least for me at that time. And then when World of War came out, that's when I really, really got into the Call of Duty franchise, which is something about our World War II game that I love. And just unfortunately, that was the last World War II Call of Duty to ever come out. But still, it was a lot of fun at the time. I have a lot of great memories there. And I still like to go back on occasion and play, just not too often, because the game itself is kind of dead at this point. There's nothing but Team Deathmatch essentially available, and a lot of the people in that game are modding and hacking and things like that, which is obviously no fun. So that is my story. That's how I got into the Call of Duty franchise just i've been playing games my entire life i started getting into more and more games as the years went on then eventually one day you know went to my cousin's house saw him playing call of d3 online i had no idea that you could even do such a thing and uh ended up eventually getting an xbox 360 with call of Duty 4 and the rest has been history i suppose and that's my story as to how i got into call of Duty. i've told it before like i said at the very beginning of the video but uh subscribers come subscribers go not everybody has heard these stories before and i think it's just a fun time to go down memory lane and i also like to you know hear how you guys got into the call of Duty franchise because we all come from you know different areas we all have different histories you know we all have different interests and whatnot like how did you get into the call of Duty franchise did you see a commercial and decide man modern warfare 2 looks really good i'm gonna try that game out or did you like just now start recently with like black ops 3 did you start with call of duty ghost like how would you guys get into the call of duty franchise i'll definitely be interested to read about that down there in the comment section below i hope you guys all enjoyed this video if you did please drop me a rating I hope you guys all have a wonderful day